uh, let's remember there's many cities in the world which still <coughs> look like this or like this or like this so we uh, we kind of know why we are here today uh, you see those those uh, pictures about air pollution in China they, they are taking this very very seriously uh, in China and they are pushing the market like hell so you are paying if you if you buy an EV you are paying half or you are paying less than half of what you would pay for an equivalent car with with normal petrol and it's it's amazing how much money they put into this Tesla is actually the the only make or the, the only car who has who is offering a really good solution uh, for the charging of their vehicles by installation installing hundreds of fast chargers even in, in, in China. While this is all great, uh, most charging is done at home, 80-90%. Um, and uh, here's where the trouble starts, in particular in, in, in cities, because uh, in a city like Berlin, correct me if I'm wrong, probably 80% of all households are apartments. And um, the solutions Yes, they, they need to be manifold and I have to I, I have described that we need to encourage or even enforce that the parking places get charges installed. This will be uh, without uh, these uh, local chargers for residential charging and job charging, EVs will not take off in cities. Um, <coughs> destination charging is a is a complement where you can replenish your battery on, on errands during shopping and these kind of things. And then intra-city fast chargers. Fast chargers are normally installed uh, along motorways, but uh, in bigger cities they make even sense to have them installed within the city center for all those who, who can't charge uh, with other methods. And the fourth thing is, well, not only a car, not only an EV, and relying on, on mobility service and car share. Pathetically um, said, my heart is bleeding um, when I see that every seventh German um, seventh German job is um, is in the car industry, and when I see all the chances that are that are missed simply, when I see the arguments, when I when I read somewhere in the Spiegel or wherever manager magazine, when I read that um, some official guys from, for instance, Volkswagen or um, or, the, or Daimler. Um, are mentioning that uh, if there is a market in the future, we have all the plants in the drawer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, uh, that's a good joke from my perspective. But it's a bad joke, and that's what I, what I would like to point out here. Um, Getting deeper into data, that's a very interesting one. Um, the question here, which is, um, which is tried to be covered, is um, how are kilometers driven now and in the future at over three time periods, which is 2015, 25 and 30, and um, I highlighted a couple of those, which you which you see private commercial ownership. That's a small one in the future. Yeah, it's it's um, it's going down from I hope you can see it from uh, from almost uh, three fourths, so three quarters, um, to less than 50 percent, so to 46 roughly. So that's a big one. And um, one of the central thesis here is uh, that global caps are going to be big. So. Also an interesting one is uh, peer-to-peer mobility, which raises until 25 and goes back to um, less than 1%. So, um, it's the disruption after the disruption, so to say. Yeah? So, a constant disruption mode, which we're finding here. For instance, I had it once with, um, with the Tesla, um, that when I came back the next day to a place where the car grounded a bit, because it was, it was a bit bumpy on the, on the ground, the next day, the Tesla remembered it, and he pumped up a bit. It, it really happened, and that's really fantastic. Because this car knows what's happening, and that's the complete disadvantage and the underestimation of the German car makers, I would say. That's the point here. Yes, especially in Ukraine, we have a lot of uh, electricity, and uh, at night time, uh, we uh, need to heat the water because uh, it's too many electricity, and we don't know how to use it. So for Ukraine, electric transport, it's uh, very nice and for people and for ecology and for producers of electricity. 
we have choice. All of us made this choice, and we need to explain our choice to other people. We need to give them information that they will do their choice to the green world. I should say that um, Holland has announced the cessation of sales of ICE vehicles in 2025. Yes. Yeah. Perhaps you were going to say that. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say, I mean, 2025 is, this is only nine years from now, this is nothing. And uh, a lot needs to happen until then. India has announced to have a fossil free fleet of vehicles until 2030, or 100% electric vehicles. Yeah, they want to be 100% electric vehicles by 2030. Yeah. yeah. Just, a, just announced, just yeah, the entire country. The entire country. They just announced it a week ago. They aim to be the first electric nation. Yeah. Yeah. I was presenting at an in investment conference in India, and he was as well. And he, our writer joked that I influenced him to make this. But I'm sure they were on that path already. He, he's really, they're doing great stuff. But it was coincidental. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but I did make the case for it very strongly. <laughs>